Bitcoin Ballin by Bandela Ale. By the way, if you want to listen to that song, the link is in our description of this video. So if you want to check it out, it'll grow on you. I'll just leave it at that. I'm on your co-host, David. Welcome to Sin City Crypto Live. We're coming at you from our studio in Sin City, Nevada. Quick disclaimer before getting into the content. Nothing that's said on this channel should be taken as financial advice. So please do your own research. With that out of the way, allow me to introduce you to your second co-host, Big Rob, what's that? Hola! It's your boy, Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we are an entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel where we take the old, the boring, the stale information, and we package it up in a fun and sexy way. Uh, also, here at Sin City Crypto, we don't just do the live streams. We also do the deep dives. This, of course, is a live stream. No way. And the stuff you haven't been watching, of course, is the deep dives. Because we ain't got a lot of clicks on them things, man. Anyways, uh, we got some really cool deep dives in the works. Some already posted, so make sure you check those out. Also, if you could help us out and hit the like button. I'm going to give you three seconds to find the like button. <clears throat> you don't know what it looks like? It's a thumb. <laughs> Pointing upwards. All right. Uh, also, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, what the hell wrong with you? And let's hit that notification bell. Muchas gracias. David, how you feeling? Feeling good. Eddie, how you feeling, bro? Pretty good, bro. You Happy Friday, good? everyone. Hope uh, everyone's having a good day. Eddie is going to Hawaii after the show. That's yes, why I he's, am. That's why he's got that. the shirt. Who on. wants to come? I'm taking spirit, first class. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a couple Hope of they years. don't cancel your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, give some shout outs in the chat. We got Brokiyoshi. Uh, first one here, Why You Loud, Russell, who else we got? Chef Murder, what's up? Uh, Sean and R.A. Daniel so far. Damn, Daniel. Who we got today, Eddie? What we got today, bro? Oh, we got, uh, who we got? We got uh, Forrest from Crypto Stackers. He'll mm -hmm. be on shortly. What else we got today? Well, we got me. Yeah. And um, we got Rocco. And that's pretty much it. So let's get started, guys. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, know? we got Robin too. My bad. Sorry, Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, the champ is here. El Campeon. How you Bit doing? Bitcoin's moving. Bitcoin's not moving. All right, so uh, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we uh, we have found that beautiful support. We have found the number I've been talking about for the last three weeks. Thirty six thousand. Yeah, you've been talking about that for thirty for the last six weeks. Three weeks. I said three weeks. Yeah. Uh, 36,000 is here. Will it go lower? Will it go higher? That was the theme of the thumbnail. Proposed a question. It was a thumb theme. Uh, we'll take uh, our first, uh, our first chat, uh, one and twos. So put a one in the chat. If you think we're going to go sub 30,000, put a two in the chat. If you think we're going to go over 40,000 in the fair. next you can't month. have a you the can't have month. a six thousand swing one way and then a four thousand uh, four thousand swing the other way. Thirty thousand, forty thousand. Yes, yeah, we're, thir we're at thirty five. We're at thirty six. You're literally about to go over the numbers. We're at thirty six. I understand that. So it, I'm rounding off. it down to thirty five. Of course, okay, you are so calm it down. down. And right. the thumbnail is to thirty five. So thank you. Um, so, anyways. <laughs> Where are we going first? <clears throat> well, here's the thing: you gotta, you gotta, you gotta give a handicap to uh, to the 35 because it's in a downward momentum right now. So it's sitting at 36. Is uh, you know, it compensates? It compensates for the uh, the the downward movement because more than likely the downward movement traditionally is going to continue, right? Have you ever met a handicapper, sports handicapper? Um, they're kind of weird. My, my no, I haven't. Is one. My really? cousin's one, yeah. They're a little, a little off. I mean, it might just be your bloodline. 
Fair so, enough. uh, <laughs> I got nothing to say to that. All right. So, anyway, we are sitting at 36,000. Hold in here. Uh, so we obviously had a big drop. Uh, we bounced off of 37,000 shortly. Uh, we traded there for, uh, what was it? Like, yeah, see, we were here at 30, basically between 36 and 37. Now we're slightly lower. Testing this 35 range, but hanging out at 36. So, this is our current capitulation. Where do you think we're going? Uh, two people in the chat, both Brooke Yoshi and Daniel, think we're going to be hitting more further down. And people are wishing Eddie a safe flight. <laughs> Thank uh, you, guys. He, he's actually not going to Hawaii. It <laughs> was a joke. He's got a. <laughs> He's Hawaiian gonna go to uh, what we call Tahiti Village. This is a local resort here <laughs> off of Tropicana, <laughs> off of Tropicana here in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, give me your finest rum colada, please. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, all right. Then uh, taking a look. All right. So where where are we at? So Bitcoin's down two percent uh, in the last twenty four hours. Obviously down a lot more over the last couple of days. Uh, Ethereum. 27,000. Everything's kind of moving in the same direction. You keep saying um, 27,000. 28,000. 2,700. 2,700, whatever, man. Are you trying to talk it into existence? Yeah. I'm trying to hype it up, baby. All right. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, Luna down 1.24%. But what isn't down is Algorand up 11%. But I wanted to highlight this. Anchor Protocol. Uh, Anchor Protocol just had a pullback. I checked it this morning. It was up uh, 15%. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Anchor Protocol's up. I did want to discuss what is going on with Anchor Protocol because this is uh, two days in a row that it's been moving. Uh, as you can see here, this is Anchor Protocol's seven-day chart. So big movement in the last seven days. Uh, if you want, uh, if we want to do TA, maybe we'll ask uh, Forrest to take a look at it. But either way... Um, Anchor protocol. What's going on on Anchor? Uh, first of all, I have an article here. What's going on? Anchor protocol price rallies over 13% while markets tumble. So obviously when something moves uh, in the opposite direction of the markets, I'm going to try to figure out why. Uh, now, TVL for Anchor protocol has increased by 2% in the last seven days. Uh, the TVL for total value locked, if you're not familiar with that, uh, with those abbreviations, uh, that is seventeen billion dollars total value locked in Anchor Protocol. If you're not familiar with Anchor Protocol, it is a Terra Luna based stablecoin uh, provider. A little bit of Dex going things going on in there. It's actually, an Ave, but on Terra Luna. Yeah. Now, uh, and I know we're going to discuss this a little later, but uh, why? M remember, we we've always harped on the fact that. Terra Luna's UST moves when the market is uncertain. When people, when you, when when the masses tend to stablecoin up because they're either selling or they're preparing to buy. Obviously, one of the stable coins of choice as of lately has been UST, also uh, known as the uh, the coin of Tether. I mean, not Tether of uh, Terra Luna. Uh, so. And then just to take a look at this, I pulled up the one month chart on the Terra UST market cap. So this is how much this has grown uh, just in the last month. Uh, it went from $16 billion market cap to $18 billion. Uh, and then uh, looking at the three month, same thing, $11 billion to 18. And then in the one year, even more dramatic. Uh, so from two billion to eighteen. So we see how much utility this uh, tether, or I don't know why I keep calling it tether, uh, the Terra Luna uh, UST uh, is is people are using it, and that's why you're seeing Anchor Protocol pump as much as it is. Also, uh, not to mention that LFG, uh, also known as the Luna Foundation let's Guard. Uh, or let's fucking go. <laughs> they are uh, buying a Bitcoin 
and uh, and straight discount. So um, they just purchased another one billion dollars worth, uh, and yeah, they they are now the second largest holder of. Uh, I know this is an article, but uh, so. But you, why are you mad over here, bro? I'm not. I'm just saying. Yeah, he's been mad since we got here, bro. He is. He's what are you mad. Talking about, he's bro? mad. He's bro, not going mad. to Tahiti Village with you, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're not invited, bro. <laughs> Another reason Anchor is pumping is because they're they're handing out massive yield. Eighteen percent on yeah. on stablecoin. Yeah. Uh, so eighteen percent off of uh, a stablecoin is is pretty huge, man. Honestly, it's it's no joke. So, uh, with that said, uh, we'll move on to the crypto bubbles. Uh, so, Algorand, as I mentioned. Up. Is there any Algorand news today? Is there anything I missed? No, they just had their event, their milking event in California. Milking? Yeah. M I L K E N. Mm. Do you, you remember, uh, I wonder what they were remember doing Napoleon kind of Dynamite movie where he was like the milk tester? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, this, this, he tastes the milk. And he's like, this cow got into an onion patch. <laughs> like, <laughs> what a great movie. What a bro. stupid movie. <laughs> what? Don't tell me you don't. You're hating on. Uh, no, I've seen it down. a couple of times, but yeah. Yeah. not in the uh, sober state of mind. If you know what I'm saying. Hey, man, great movie. If you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, uh, it is a very nostalgic, uh, classic movie. Um, if What's you, better, Napoleon Dynamite or Tropic Thunder? Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Tropic Thunder's good, man. Tropic Thunder literally has you the gotta best be one-liners ever in the history of movies. You know what I liked in Tropic Thunder was the dance moves with the, uh, what's his name? Uh, old old uh, Mr. Scientology guy. Oh, uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, yeah. Kaiku. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, Fear and Greed Index, 22. Uh, so we are, we are in uncertain territory when it comes to traders. Uh, a lot of volatility, but traditionally speaking, uh, when we're under 25, Amazing time to buy, and I think everybody's in agreement that uh, not a bad time to enter when you're at 36000 at least compared to where we were. Um, and then lastly, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, just to look, glance over at the traditional markets, NASDAQ is still down almost 1%. We had the largest drop in the NASDAQ since 2020, yesterday. So lots of uncertainty in the traditional markets, the NASDAQ in particular, which follows our uh, tech-driven stocks. Uh, so, yeah, you know, where, where do you, you think we're going to bounce back? I thought we were going to bounce back today. But you thought we were going to bounce back today? Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's, uh, yeah, there's just a lot, lot, of, lot of, lot of uh, fearful. I was watching uh, CNN and then Bloomberg, and uh, people are scared. People are uh People on Wall Street are they're preparing for a recession, or actually they're like expecting it. it was kind of the general consensus from what I was watching on interviews. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Rob, we got a new person in the chat. Who we got? Connor Anderson. Connor McGregor. Connor McGregor. <laughs> Connor Anderson. Uh, he says hola. He's Welcome. Drinking two percent, bro. No, he's talking about the movie. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I get it. No, I got it. Yeah, you wouldn't see it because it's a stupid movie. I got you, bro. <laughs> All right, without further ado, uh, we are going to bring on the man, the myth, the legend, the trading genius, Mr. Forrest. 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 Road intro. Forrest. No sound for that. Yeah, we can see him. It's okay. Forrest. Forrest. What's up, Forrest? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks Good. for having me on, as usual. My pleasure. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on our show. Blessing us with your knowledge. How uh, how's your trading week? How's your trading week been so far? Bloody, you making money? Oh, <laughs> uh, we're just grinding right now. Uh, it's one of those things where if you you're you're getting rewarded for taking profits and trading on higher frequencies, right? So getting in a position, locking in profits, and then as soon as we bounce and, and have that volatility right back down, you've already locked in profits. You can get in a, another. Uh, short position or long position, whatever, but we're we're just grinding down in a zone. And the only thing that's really paying right now lately are shorts. Uh, so actually, I like to personally look for swing trades and long positions. So current circumstances have not been great for me to trade this week. Uh, however, I think we could start to see some of these bigger macro moves start to play out once the S&P 500 and legacy market 
uh, regulates a little bit or, or cools down a little bit, at least in terms of volatility. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it's one of those things like you can either wait for the market to adjust to your strategy or you can adjust your strategy to the market. So I may also start playing some higher time or uh, lower, fr higher frequency trade type plays as well. Just getting in and getting out and uh, just being consistent that way as well. Tough awesome. market right now. And then we were having a discussion. I don't know if you caught it earlier, but uh, you know, if you had to pick a movie, you going Tropic Thunder, you going uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Wh which one is on Tropic your Thunder. Uh, Tropic Tropic Thunder. Thunder? He didn't even. He didn't even. He didn't even have a, a <laughs> second of hesitation. This man, Boris, got mad respect for you. All bro. right, and then so uh, uh, one last thing. Uh, so yeah, I just want I want your vibe on uh, uh, just just where do you think Bitcoin's? What do you think is going on with Bitcoin? You think it's uh outside of the charts you think you think we're we're we're, we're heading into this recession do the the traditional markets you think it's gonna take bitcoin with it i mean what, what's your vibe on what's going on people are scared man yeah, uh, people are scared i'm very 50 50 i think if if <clears throat> like i think being a hundred percent i think anybody who's like i'm a hundred percent this is going to happen with bitcoin or like i think we're in one of the periods of time where where we have the highest uncertainty and like you just mentioned in the fear and greed index it's, it's reflected there with fear. Uh, we have a lot of uncertainty. Some people seem very, very certain that we're going to get a crash or we're going to get a recession. Um, but we know that it's very, very difficult to perfectly time that recession or perfectly time that dump or crash. And trying to, to go short in time, uh, you know, big crashes in the past is, especially with S&P 500 in the legacy market, is not very rewarding because more often than not, we just keep pumping and the S&P 500 continues to, to go up because of the amount of money that we print. So uh, I have two big, two main scenarios mapped out. One is the scenario, and I'll show you the chart in just a moment, unless we want to just jump into charts right now. Um, Actually, I wanted to go over something before we jumped into to the chart. So Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so I mean, basically, I've got two scenarios mapped out. One is one is that we pump into midterms, like the S and P five hundred and legacy kind of kind of comes comes back for one last rally before midterms, before we get get any any type of recession or big crash. Uh, and then the alternative is that Bitcoin just keeps grinding right down to around twenty four thousand, and twenty four thousand is where I'd expect a big bounce from twenty four k up to thirty two k. And if we see twenty four k Bitcoin. Uh, I will be buying super, super aggressively and then trying to get as much in at 24 as possible and as much out at 32 as possible because because I'd be very, very confident in that bounce uh, move. That's solid. Okay, so before we jump into charts, uh, I, I want to I share something with our audience. And if you're not following Forrest on Twitter, please do so. You'll be doing yourself a big favor. So Rocco, if you can pull up my laptop. So Forrest tweeted this uh, this morning at 7 in the morning. Uh, the crypto market is stacked against retail investors like you and I. Here are five tips to be a successful retail investor. Uh, one, understand and accept where you are on the crypto food chain. And there's a, a cool little picture here. So we're all the way on the bottom. Non-crypto retail, crypto retail. Uh, so understand that. Don't be exit liquidity. Uh, if you're hearing about the next salon on YouTube, you're late. Two, play the obvious long-term alpha. And he says, can't find an edge, join the club. Uh, look for alpha that everyone has, but isn't acting on because it's too far into the future. Examples he gives are Bitcoin having ETH merge, Solana NFTs. Uh, and then there's some charts here. Uh, number three, stay involved, stay disciplined and stay patient. Uh, eventually the hundred X investment will fall into your lap. Uh, and then number four, get your initial out ASAP on anything that isn't a long-term play or large cap top 10 by market cap. So essentially talking about, uh, and then it goes on to show the Elliott waves and how typically there's three waves up. And uh, Forrest talks about getting your money out during the third wave. Because during the first wave are the early investors. They find the next big thing. They get in with conviction. They share with others. The third wave is validation. News breaks and it goes viral. The masses start piling in. And then the fifth wave, uh, the third wave or wave number five is the exit liquidity. This is uh, the people who are late to the party by the top. So... Uh, he talks about taking profits on that second, that middle wave there. And then uh, number six, bonus tips, specialized to gain an edge. So uh, first and foremost, this is an amazing thread. So th thank you for taking the time to kind of share your knowledge on stuff. Is there anything like you want to add to this or, or like what kind of inspired you to, to do something like this? Because this obviously took time to put together, right? Yeah, so a, a lot of it is like I've, 
been fortunate enough to, to be, you know, on YouTube for the last year and start to, to build up an audience and try to share um, the, the learnings and knowledge I have through YouTube. Uh, YouTube is really, we're seeing it, it come down a little bit in viewership. So I'm also trying to really get on Twitter because I know a lot of people are digesting on inform their information on Twitter as well. Um, but the interesting part about Twitter is like you can kind of create these really nice threads that are that are really easy to follow and they don't necessarily require like super high video quality production and that's something that I personally struggle with on my channels. I, I hate editing videos. Um, so I'm trying to this this new approach where um, you know I I people can find me on YouTube but they can also get value uh, from following me on Twitter as well. It's just just another uh, area to to share my, you know, my knowledge and my learnings with people. And that's what I'm here for. It's whether it's, whether it's in a video or whether it's on, on Twitter, I want to be able to want to be here to help people because at the end of the day, like a lot of people are coming into crypto and a lot of people unfortunately are losing money. This is a space where like you can't go to a financial advisor and be like, Hey, I want to invest in NFTs. I want to invest in web three. I want to invest in altcoins or crypto. Uh, they'll laugh you out the door. Uh, so if you want to be invested in one of the fastest growing spaces in the world, or the fastest growing industry in the world, uh, then you kind of have to DIY it. And the problem with DIYing it is you have these people that are just like uh, either not giving you good information or you're just a beginner when it comes to investing your own money, even though you might have a really sound knowledge base and you might have a lot of conviction about Bitcoin or Ethereum, uh, just there's so many pitfalls that you can fall into. And that's what I'm really just trying to help people with. Um, so a lot of my content is tailored towards the average retail investor for that reason. And then uh, one more, one more thing before you jump into TA. Uh, I I've been hearing the, the resurgence on the uh, four year cycle kind of a narrative. I I've been kind of in the camp that I think the, uh, you know, technically we were on the third cycle of a four year cycle. If you were to look at that. And I, I'm just in the camp that, I don't think the first year really had any significance because of the trading volume, the the liquidity wasn't there. Barely, I think there was like one exchange out there. Well, you know, anyways, completely different. I I uh, I uh, liken it to uh, comparing st uh, stocks and um, the flows of a. Uh, of of the market in like the 1910s, for example, and trying to correlate that to today, uh, making a strong case for that. So. Do you do you believe in the four year cycles? Uh, I mean, or do you do you, do you think that's a an outdated model? Do you think that we've kind of shifted out of those? I mean, what's your take on that? Because I don't know, I don't know how I feel about I, it. I believe they're having a. I believe the, so. The four year cycles are based off of Bitcoin's having schedule, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, so every four years or so, Bitcoin's incoming supply distribution, or basically its inflation rate, gets cut in half. Um, that's becoming for for two. There, there's two major reasons um, that I believe they're having a lesser and lesser effect on the overall market. For one, each subsequent 50% decrease is a lesser decrease in inflation than the prior year, just based off like you're kind of got this like, uh, I don't know what the right mathematical mathematical term is to describe the the effect, but you have this, this, this diminishing returns effect on uh, in the inflation, the decreasing inflation of, of Bitcoin, right? So early on in the first halving, the inflation rate of Bitcoin went from 26% down to 13%. That is a huge jump. Yeah. Then you have like a 12% down to a 6%, then a 6% down to a 3%, then a 3%. And I think we're at like 1.79% right now. So the next halving, we're going to go from like 1.8% inflation down to 0.9% inflation. That's just like a point, that's like a very smaller it's a, in terms of absolute volume of decrease or the, the decreased inflation for Ethereum or not Ethereum uh, for Bitcoin, it's a smaller amount, if that makes sense. So there's a diminishing return effect on Bitcoin. Not only that, but Bitcoin's market cap has been increasing uh, inversely to that. So you have, you know, diminishing effect on the, the, in, the incoming inflation increase, but then you also have that needing to carry over an effect on something that has a larger market cap. Um, the other, th the, the other reason is we have like early on, like you said, in the last market cycle, the market cycle before that, we had a casino, essentially like follow me on this analogy. We had, we had a casino where you could basically only play blackjack. 
right? It was, it was just blackjack and, and Bitcoin is blackjack. So like you have these four year market cycles coming in and, and you have this bull market coming in and you have all this money and liquidity coming in to blackjack. Well, now we have NFTs, we have altcoins, we have Ethereum, we have dApps, we have in the casino, we have roulette, we have Baccarat, we've got poker, we've got Texas Hold'em, we've got pot limit, we've got like way more options for new money to come into the market. So previously, like all of the new money that was coming into the crypto space was just going into Bitcoin, right? And last market cycle, we started dancing around with like some ICOs and some altcoins and we did see some crazy returns. But the, one of the biggest reasons that I believe we did not hit those 100K plus targets that everybody had for Bitcoin is because a lot of that, that was built off of a model, a, a model where the casino had fewer games, right? It was built off of previous market cycles uh, performances. And we got diminished performance this market cycle because we had so many other opportunities. We had meme coins for the first time ever. We had just like a ridiculous, you know, two or three meme coin seasons within this bull market cycle. So instead of people saying, oh, I'm going to buy Bitcoin at 60K and hope that it goes to 100K and maybe make, you know, 60, 70%, I'm going to gamble for a 200X on this, on this meme coin or I'm gonna gamble in the NFT market, or I'm gonna get into DeFi. You have so many other options aside from Bitcoin to put your money into that we just saw that diminished return on, on Bitcoin. So two reasons there, decreasing effect on inflation over time, and then more competition for, for Bitcoin. So you know we're big into casinos here in, uh, in Sin City, obviously. You know That's our, our, our backbone here. But uh, I gotta say, man, that uh, the meme coins are definitely the slot machines. They don't, uh, they're shiny on the outside. They catch your attention when you're walking by, like but the payouts and the odds are absolutely trash. So anyways, <laughs> uh, and then one last thing, uh, one of our, um, one of our viewers threw a super chat your way. Uh, Broke Yoshi says, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, thanks Broke Yoshi for super chatting as well. Uh, without further ado, we'll uh, send it over to you to talk some, uh, some TA brother. Yeah. I'll uh, just share my screen here. Switch to picture in picture. Yeah, so we're not seeing anything out of Bitcoin that we haven't been that we haven't planned for. As painful it is, like just because we plan for it doesn't mean that it's not painful on our portfolios, especially our long long term portfolios. Um, we had our first our first uh, ladder zone, right? So this, in my opinion, even in hindsight, even though we've dropped below it, I think this was an excellent place to consider laddering in. I bought here, obviously the stuff that I bought here is underwater right now. And that's, that's fine. It's down a few percent. There's a very big difference. If you started laddering in, in this green box, okay, you're down 10%. If you started FOMOing in up here at 46, 47 K. Okay. Now you're down 25, 26%. It's a much different game. Not only that, but this is why, right? We have our, our several, you know, ladder buy zones or several bounce levels. This is why we don't go all in at this, you know, uh, 36, 37 K all the way up to like 40, 39 K level, right? We're not going to just go all in here and then, okay, now if it goes down to 24 K, we have no, you know, stable coins or dry powder left to buy this bounce. Um, so I still think that it's completely, completely fine to have this as a first buy zone. We've fallen through it. That is, that is completely fine. This is planned for. We have our next ladder that we've started. If I zoom in here, we kind of just tapped it at like 35.1. There's like a margin pressure level there or something uh, that, that caused us to bounce. But $34,500 for me is one of my larger buy zones, right? So this is, you know, this is a small buy zone. We'll say like, you know, 10, 15%. If, if you know, I'm just going to kind of throw out some, some numbers that I've been working with um, of, of my stable coin allocation, you know, like 10% here, just a very light buy in case we, we move back up and trend, trend back upwards and, you know, take profits there. That's completely uh, fine and reasonable. This is going to be much, much closer to like 35%. This is going to be like a big chunk. You honestly could, will probably go like 40% because I'm getting uh, very confident in thirty-four and a half thousand dollars, and I want to show you guys why in just a second. This will be a smaller level. It is historical uh, support, uh, and I could definitely see a double bottom here, or I guess it would be a triple if if you count that correction over there. Um, but overall, it would still be a little bit bearish, just because we you know we don't have uh, 
like we we came up higher this time. So in theory, we should be able to hold thirty four and a half thousand dollars as opposed to moving down to you know twenty eight twenty nine. Um, but I think it's still a level worth buying. It'd probably be like you know ten percent. And then if we move down to uh, twenty four thousand dollars, and I'll show you guys why in just a second. This would be an aggressive buy, forty percent plus, and I'd probably get as leveraged or as reasonably leveraged as possible, like two x to three x leverage. Uh, on some of my buys down here. And this would, to me, pretty much confirm a bear market, right? And a lot of people are probably thinking like, oh, we're already in a bear market. We're in a bearish trend. You know, you can call it a bear market and it's just comes down to sub semantics. Um, but I'll kind of go into why in just a moment, I think like this would be, okay, confirmed we are legitimately in a bear market if we go down to $24,000. You guys, whether you identify a bear market early or not, like, Obviously, if we just because we're by, by the time we go down to 24K and, you know, oh, we're in a bear market, it's kind of too late, right, to identify the bear market. So, like, understanding whether or not we're in a bear market or a bull market really doesn't help that much because, you know, you can say, oh, this was, you know, we were in a bear market over here. When in reality, we just kind of came back up and made a new all time high. And this wasn't really a bear market, this was just a correction. This could absolutely still be a, you know, a, a crash and a correction. And I do think it's still on the table for us to rally back up towards these, these middle levels around 46 to 52K, right? But $24,000 is where I would be buying heavily, right? With the intention to turn around and sell the retest at $32,000 and then cut a lot out of my portfolio, like cut, uh, could take, take a considerable amount off the table for, you know, preparation of lower levels. But until we actually come down to these 28 K to 24 K levels, I'm not that worried about, you know, holding on to some of my, my, you know, crypto. I had Solana pulled up. We'll go over Solana in just a second, but I do want to show you guys why I kind of contend that we're not necessarily in a whole heaping, you know, heck of a lot of trouble right now. Off of our last all-time high, our previous all-time high last summer or in April of $65,000, we have this 1x short level. And this is the point at which like, if, if buyers continue to come in below this level, right, and shorters can't take, take Bitcoin below this 1x short level and hold it down there and basically hold Bitcoin's head underwater and drown it, uh, then they haven't won yet. Like what we saw here was... was you know, obviously we had a really nice bounce off of 3X short level. We made a new, you know, local high that was a lower high. And we came down and we got all of this uh, capitulation down here around $32,000. But every time the shorters tried to bring or the sellers tried to take it below 32,000, we found buyers pushing it back up and we didn't get any real sustained trends or sustained price action below $32,000, right? And why that's significant is because if... If they can't hold it below thirty point thirty two point four thousand dollars in this case, that means that the shorters are worried about a new all time high being made, and that's exactly what happened. We we couldn't sustain this. The bears could not under thirty two point four thousand dollars, and we came up and made a new all time high. Why does that mean that that they are worried about a new all time high being made? It's because they're not willing to short. It means they're not willing to sell and short and keep their liquidation points below this local high or this all-time high or even you know more accurately this local high right this is telling us that the market and at this point in time believed right even the bears believed that bitcoin could come back and rise up above fifty nine thousand dollars because there was no shorters there were no no sellers or bears willing to short and keep their liquidation point below this local high right so if we move this over here we see the same thing right? The, the bears could not take it below $34,500 with any sustained price action. In fact, we found very, very strong bounces. Now we're approaching again. Until the bears take us below $34,400 and hold us there, you know, like taking us down probably by taking us down to 24K, I'm not worried about, you know, cutting a large portion of my portfolio, right? So, um, 
you know, if we move our, before I kind of go back in time, if we move our local high over here, we can see that they do have a renewed point of resistance where they can kind of load up on shorts and keep their liquidation point above $48,000 and be pretty protected and short us potentially all the way down to $24,000. This is why I don't think we'll fall below 24,000. This is why I also think that buying at 24,000 and selling the 2X short bounce would be the play to get out of the bear market, right? Or to get to prep for the bear market. Like buy as much as possible at 24,000, turn around and sell it at 32,000, right? We saw this play work recently, right? I bought at $34,500, turned around and sold the 1X short to 2X short bounce at $46,000. This is a really, really common trade in these big downtrends, right? Uh, same thing over here, this local high, buy the one X short, turn around the a few days later, or even the next day, if we really kind of zoom in and turn around and sell it at $39,600. This one X short to two X short bounce happens all the time. And if we get another capitulation to our one X short, I am buying this one X short level really aggressively, turning around and selling the two X short uh, bounce very, very aggressively. Um, now back on the topic of, you know, them needing to take it below this one X short level. That's what happened last market cycle. They were able, you can see that we initially got this, uh, this one X short, two X short bounce, right? We, we, you know, had a little wick below it, but the, the bears couldn't sustain price, uh, uh, capitulation below basically 10 K 9.935. And we bounced right back up to this two X short, uh, 2x short level, 13.25k. Right? This was an excellent trade to make, and obviously in hindsight. But then we came back, we got a little bit of a bounce, and we couldn't get back up to this 2x short level, and we capitulated. We fell 70% off the all-time high, tried to get back up on this 1x short level, and they took it back and held resistance here, and they held resistance here again. Right? This is the point where we would have wanted to cut bait and get out. They held resistance at this 9.9K level, this 10K level, and we ended up falling all the way down to 3K. So if they can take us well below the 1X short level, we want to be able to sell the retest of that 1X, that, that 1X short level and get out, right? So this is, this is, you know, when we start falling below this particular level, uh, that is where we want to be very, very careful uh, about, uh, about getting out, right? Um, I do briefly want to cover one other coin, um, Solana, because I do think we are approaching decent buy levels. Um, so if we throw on our, our risk reward levels, our Sunsa levels, and we throw these guys on, you can see that these have been really, really solid levels, right? We initially held support at the three to one, right? We got a little bit of resistance at the two to one some more support at the, the three to one. And then we, we rallied all the way to the one to one and had a perfect resistance level at $140. And we came down and this is where I started buying. This is where I started uh, accumulating some Solana. We didn't get that bounce right back up. We did hold it and grind on support here. And then the Solana network <laughs> did what, it, what it's great at doing and went down. Uh, however, we are seeing a lot of Solana NFT volume and a lot of volume still into Steppen. And we are approaching this support level once again of about $79, uh, $80. And I do think that this is going to be a, a very decent support level. In fact, I'd be unless we see a major crash out of the uh, overall market, I'd be very surprised if we didn't bounce from 80 back to 100 as a retest, right? So 80 to 100, I think is a pretty decent trade to be making. And it's a trade that I'm going to be making. Um, now, I don't know if you guys remember just talking about this. But the plan here, buy at 100, right? Buy at 100. If we drop to 80, buy at 80. And then if we return to 100, which I think there's a strong chance we do, sell the stuff you bought at 100 at break even and then sell the stuff you bought at 80 at 100 for profit, right? And that's how you can just kind of grind out some of these levels and continue to be profitable even when price action is mostly uh, down. Um, and then just lastly, in general, I mean, I'll, I'll comment on this. I mean, my, my kind of, you know, bear market prep strategy is to zoom out and look at the big picture uh, and know that, you know, I, I mentioned that this in the thread, right? I mentioned this in the, in the Twitter thread that you brought up. Uh, we have this Ethereum merge coming up. Everybody knows about it. The, the Ethereum's supply is going to go from inflationary to deflationary. Uh, it makes a ton of sense, in my opinion, to get out ahead of this and 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 um, buy some ethereum and and accumulate yes ethereum could crash 
to $1,700. It could crash to $1,400. Maybe we get a ridiculous bear market and it crashes really, really low. But being willing to just continue to accumulate Ethereum all the way down, knowing that we're going to get a big, a big supply cut. We're, the, the supply is getting choked out. Why not just be ready so you don't have to FOMO in in you know August, September, November, whenever whenever the merge ends up, ends up happening. I don't believe there's a specific date yet. Um, but as soon as ETH's price starts going up around that merge time and after the merge, people are going to be like FOMOing in. So why not just accumulate now at lower levels? And if we see a two, three, four X out of Ethereum, then we're fine. Worst case scenario is the merge kind of flops and we don't see it manifest in terms of solid price action. And you've just accumulated a bunch of Ethereum during a bear market and next market cycle and next bull market, you'll have a bunch of cheap Ethereum ready to go up. Um, so I, I think there's there's not a ton of risk there. There's not, not as much risk as people people may perceive. Wow, that was amazing. Um, so I, I have a question. Is there anything mm -hmm. you're holding, and you don't have to say what it is, but is there anything you're holding that you, you just will not sell for five, 10 years? Or is everything kind of like, hey, if I'm in a profit taking zone, I'm taking profit? Yeah, so uh, basically I've kind of simplified my portfolio. Um, and I think this is a really good strategy for, uh, for kind of like going into a bear market. Um, playing the macro catalysts, right? So that would be Bitcoin halving and ETH merge, right? So ETH merge is obviously comes first. So being pretty heavy in ETH, going to the ETH merge, uh, usually that stuff is not priced in. Bitcoin halvings, halving events never get priced in. We always see the, the appreciation in price after the halving, right? So basically being heavy in ETH and then, you know, after the merge, right before the Bitcoin halving, switching over to be heavy in Bitcoin, right? Uh, but then the other two things, or I guess three things is having uh, high conviction plays. So I've got two very, very high conviction plays. The first is Nano. Uh, and the high conviction plays are the, the, the plays that you will hold to zero, right? Unless something fundamentally, you know, bad happens to the project, something very like fundamental changes for the worse about the project. The, the, the project that you would just grind into the ground and hold for three, four years, no matter what, no, no matter how bad the price action gets, you'll just continue to accumulate more, buy more uh, and not sell. So I have, I have an NFT version of that and I have a, a crypto version of that. The crypto version is Nano. Um, I believe in it long term. I know a lot of people don't, but I really, really like the technology and I think it has massive, massive potential. Uh, the NFT version of that are V1 punks. I think they're ridiculously undervalued considering that they predate the actual crypto punks um, and they're trading at like eight to 10% of the floor value of crypto punks. Um, so I think long term, those two plays have, have huge potential. And then the fourth thing, you kind of fourth and fifth or third and fourth. I don't know which one I'm on third. Um, you want right now ETH bearing assets. So for me, that was Zed run horses. I have a couple of Zed run horses that I breed them every single month and they earn me ETH, which is fantastic, right? I just earn more ETH. Uh, step in, right? I'm earning Solana, basically cashing out for Solana. And because we've got the ETH merge coming up, I'm just cashing that Solana over to ETH. So those are like, um, you know, pretty, pretty decent, yield bearing assets. Uh, and then finally, just some sort of allocation to stable coins that you can catch a flash crash with. I mean, we're getting very, very, you know, uncertain times right now. If anything drops to those green easy bands and crypto stackers pro, you see ETH dropping to like $1,700 or Bitcoin dropping to 24 K. Um, just having the ability to kind of lever up and, and buy at those levels, um, is very useful. So now what are you okay so so scenario right bitcoin's at 24 eth is at 1400 what are you buying first uh eth 100 percent until the merge until the merge ethereum um i think eth is set to outperform bitcoin because of the the merge uh and then once the merge takes place and hopefully we see some price appreciation i think switching from uh, an eth allocation more towards a, a higher bitcoin allocation is smart in preparation for the the bitcoin having yeah, that's kind now, of the chronological order i play it played out as i've been under this kind of like theory that i, I think uh ethereum is gonna have the big run up before the merge and then you know with the buy the rumor sell the news kind of ideology 
I think people are going to, in my opinion, I think they're going to be, they're going to be disappointed in what the ETH merge will be. Uh, I, it's going to become deflationary. It's the next major uh, roadmap. Uh, well, it's already a thing. little deflationary, but it'll be more. But yeah. here's the thing no one's talking about is what's happening. What's going to happen to all those staked ETH? When E2.0 goes live and everything becomes unstable, well, it's locked up for six months. Six minimum. months afterwards, right? But, but so that's what I'm saying. I think I think there's gonna be a big run up, and then a, a, a I think there's gonna be a big sell off, kind of the same way that people were talking about Cardano with the smart contracts. Like, oh my God, it's gonna be amazing when smart contracts come, and then they came, and then they're like, well, there's not much else new here. I mean, like, well, it takes time to build, and with the gas i think a lot of people are expecting the gas fees to like ultimately disappear when it moves over to proof of stake but from my understanding it's uh, uh not going to really affect the gas fees uh so the gas fees are essentially just going to move over from uh the miners to the stake pool operators and uh so i, I don't know I, i'm just a little weary on the what's going to happen after the uh, the oh, upgrade, well. you know, <laughs> after the uh, the merge, I think people are going to be disappointed in what I think. They're, I think they're expecting too much for what Ethereum right, is going right. to ultimately do uh, in the very very near term after the upgrade. So I I'm kind of eyeballing get it for for me. I want to get into Ethereum now or maybe in a couple months uh, or at least something like that. I I just figure, figure it's going to have a big run up, and then I think it's going to have a giant sell off on the back end after the rollout. Maybe a month later, they're like, hey. Gas fees are still forty bucks a transaction. Like, what's going on? Like, that's what I think. I think my my vibe is. Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, that anyway. makes sense. Makes All right, Forrest. Well, we know you're busy, man. We appreciate you uh, coming on our show again. Thank you so much for sharing your insight yeah, and your knowledge with yeah. us in our community. Also, man, the chat was absolutely loving you today, man. Everyone's like uh, hyping you up, brother. So uh, we go. Pre we appreciate, yeah, it. appreciate it. Go subscribe. It. The Crypto Stackers Pro on YouTube. Go follow Forrest on Twitter. If you're a TA person, go sign up for his freaking software. It's nine dollars, <laughs> nine bucks. Literally, you can use everything he goes over on the show. So we love Crypto Stackers Pro. I use yeah. it. I use it on the channel. I use it at home. So love your product. Love you, my friend. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you next Friday. Thanks, you guys too. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Of course, thank and you. Wa Take care. Watch that Napoleon Dynamite, man. It'll, don't. Uh, don't. You haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> don't. <you know? laughs> Survive. All right. All right, brother. Thanks, Forrest. Man, that's uh, that was a good TA, That was good, man. man. That was great. 24K. I like, uh, I like how he showed the first all-time high and the 1X level. And then the second all-time high when we got the 69. You know, it, the thing with Mark. So I guess what he essentially said... Is if we go under 34 and stay under, then the Bears have won. I mean, essentially, I think. But, um, no, uh, for me, uh, you know, I always take into account markets, they always have the biggest moves when you don't expect them. And so you'll never, you know, I know we're, we're, we, we opened up the show talking about how traditional investors are expecting a recession, you know, people on Wall Street, but, you know, realistically these things don't happen you know the the housing crash of 2008 everybody was euphoric i mean people uh, identified the indicators but general consensus was everybody's making money in housing and that's uh it works you know nothing's gonna break and and that was majority of the people but there were some smart people that were identifying hey this is a endless cycle that's not looking good but anyways these markets move in drastic ways when you don't expect them and so with the traditional markets, maybe we don't go into a recession right away. Maybe it catches people off guard. Maybe we, we, we get a psych out. The same thing can be said with, with crypto and Bitcoin. And if you look at Bitcoin's history, people are like, oh, no way it's going to get up to 20,000. And then boom, it goes from uh, 1,000 1, to 20,000 uh, last cycle. Uh, and then the same thing can be said here where people are like, oh, it's going to get to 100,000 for sure. And it doesn't do that. So uh, just remember that whatever... Whatever the vibe is of the room, markets usually do the opposite. Or they, they psych you out, and they, they were like, oh, no, that's not going to happen. And then it does happen, but just not when you think it is. But anyways, um, quick uh, highlight. We got Tox in here. Tox, hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. We got a new person in here. Uh, he also mentioned, uh, where do you guys think the money is coming from for pumps on these things? So I think he's just talking about crypto 
in general, perhaps I, I know he, he mentioned that when we were talking about uh, Bitcoin uh, as far as the TA. So, um, you know, I think there are the uh, the retail investor has left uh, the the novice retail investor has left cryptocurrency. Uh, there's not as much buzz about it. And especially in Bitcoin, even this last cycle, people weren't FOMOing into Bitcoin. You weren't going to work and people were coming up to you like, hey, man, what's up with this Bitcoin thing? No, they were talking about meme coins. And those novice investors, I think, for the most part, have left, majority of them. But then a small percentage of these investors, uh, they came in off of meme coins or speculative projects and discovered this ecosystem of Bitcoin and smart contracts and Ethereum and Binance. And, you know, they're starting to discover the utility. So um, as far as to answer your question, institutions right now are the ones that move the market. Uh, but the big pumps in the past have been the retail investors. They, however, have left. Yeah, that's what I got. Plus, uh, yeah. FOMO. FOMO. FOMO never oh, goes FOMO. Away. And, um, you know, is it, is, where's the NASDAQ at real quick? Are we tanking? Uh, we were, we were just about 2% down. Uh, we are at 1.7 right now. Uh, so no bueno, friends. No we bueno. opened up the market. We opened up our show today at half a percent. Uh, so we are down 1.7, uh, which on top of the 5% yesterday, uh, these are giant, tr uh, multi-trillion dollar, uh, index funds. Uh, so Movement on here. I mean, you're talking lots. Of, what's what's the um, what's the uh, market cap for the uh, the Nasdaq? Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, when y'all pull it up for me, real quick. Market cap for Nasdaq. But yeah, I mean, you're talking. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, I know the S and P 500. I think it's 45 trillion. Uh, I'm not sure what it is for the Nasdaq, but I'm sure it's got to at least be 10, 10 to 10 to 15 trillion. I would I would think somewhere in there would be my estimate. You know, but uh, Bitcoin now uh, under the thirty six thousand, more than likely uh, got nudged under the thirty six thousand dollars support uh, for the simple fact that the uh, legacy markets are are down as well. So, so, so two things. First thing, uh, I put I dropped all the links to uh, <clears throat> to the Crypto Stackers YouTube and uh, Forrest Twitter. Also, me and Robin have this discussion all the time about meme coins and how they're bad. And uh, and my thing is always. If it brings people in the space, if you come into the space from a meme coin and then you're like, oh, crap, we have Bitcoin. Yeah. And literally, we have a community member, Kenny. Kenny G said, yep, that was me. Came in on Doge, stayed for Bitcoin and other projects. So stop saying meme coins are bad. Stop saying community it doesn't mean anything because it means something. Even though they come no, in for no, a meme coin. If you come in for memes. They stay when they see the crypto market but as if a whole. You, if you stay. come in for meme coins, you never leave. I mean, I, I have a buddy. He literally went in on meme coins, dumps thousands of dollars, lost it all, never moved into anything else. He never moved over to Bitcoin. Uh, so there are, there are people that discover it but there's also just a lot of people what about uh the the lady that we that we work with uh, with the p she she went all in on what? ship uh <laughs> pr oh yeah yeah and i won't be dropping names but yeah. she went all in on ship too man and she's all like i lost it all and like she's like i still i still got some of it but i sold most of it and i'm just like and, and these people are now burned and and you know what these people maybe would have invested in Bitcoin had they not went in. You know, if they would have looked at Bitcoin and learned what it was before they invested in meme coins, maybe they invested in the right thing in the first place because now they're scorned. They're like, oh, no, I ain't messing with crypto. I'm not touching it because uh, I went in on SHIB and I lost all my money. So I'm not, I mean, I've heard that more. Small... I heard that more than I've heard, well, I came into the space off of meme coins. I'm telling you, I hear more people, I got in the SHIB, I lost all my money, I ain't messing with crypto. I keep hearing that. But what I don't hear is I, I came I'm in on SHIB. losers. <laughs> I, hey, man, don't call you. Then you call them losers, see? I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that, like, the percentage of people that shift over into the the right markets, you know, Bitcoin and whatnot, you know, it, it, it's like uh, it's like uh, doing drugs and then being like, well, I was uh, I was in the gutter, but then I found God like. 
But that's like you making a case for drugs. Be like, well, well, some of the best people that met, that found God was in the dumps because they were they're high on meth. Like, I'm just saying, man. Like, what? You, that's the dumbest analogy. That's what I. That, no, that's used. what I'm saying. The analogy here is that, that the you dumbest found, analogy. You found. <laughs> You, you, you are a good analogy guy, but that was the worst one I think no, I've I'm ever telling heard you, you say. <laughs> I'm telling you, memes are drugs, bro. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying that there's, there's no financial benefit to meme coins. There isn't. And you know what? The people that came into say the that space. To the people that made millions. Yeah, okay. There's money to be made there. I'm just saying, in the grand ecosystem, as far as moving our civilization forward and making a better place for, for, for people that don't have bank accounts that have troubles transacting, have trouble moving money, they get feed to death. Uh, there is a lot of people that with this new emerging cryptocurrency technology, their lives can fundamentally be better. And meme coins don't do that. And that's why I'm in this space. Because they finally I, don't make things better. They don't. Huh. Sean says my analogy is leaving a cookie. That's interesting. <laughs> uh yeah me too that was a bad analogy like i said you usually do good analogies uh so shizzy uh, has a question guys he said would hex be considered a meme coin is shizzy new by the way shizzy new i don't, I don't think we ever had shizzy no yeah. shizzy hola welcome to sin city crypto i think he might have been here if not we're gonna drop hola anyways um no, Hex, you know, Hex has got fundamentals, it's got utilities, it's got roadmap, uh, it has a very large community. Uh, it is it is a more speculative asset. There's, you know, Richard Hart, who's the, uh, the founder of Hex, has a very strong personality. And a lot, he ain't, a lot of people ain't vibing with him. I'll just put it that way. Uh, you but know, a lot of people are vibing with him. A lot of people vibe with him. Yeah. Uh, very polarizing uh, personality. But anyways, he's one of those people where you either absolutely love him or you absolutely hate him. I yeah. don't think there's any in between. But here's here's regardless of what I think about him, regardless of what I think about the project, I firmly believe it's here to stay. I think it's it ain't going to go to zero, in my opinion, unless there's a flaw in the code that we don't know and there's like some massive exploit. Uh, Richard Hart does supposedly own like 90% of the tokens or something. I Don't fact check me on that. I don't know. But supposedly, uh, some of the people in my space have been like, yo, this you dude... You my space? Yeah, my space. I remember my yeah, space. They're, they're, they hold that, that the founder holds a crazy amount of the tokens uh i don't like i said i i don't know off of uh off the top of my head but uh it's probably a lot of upside i would say that's one of the riskier plays but it's not like you're well, not gambling. a lot of money. i wouldn't say you're gambling on that one uh but definitely i wouldn't i wouldn't expect much out of it in this bearish trend uh, that would that would be a project if you believe in it that I would get into right before like a big run up. Uh, so if you feel like the market's going to turn and we're going to go bullish and you know maybe the halving's coming around, whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's get into our very next segment: the hot take. That's hot. So our hot take for today is as follows. Which sector of the cryptocurrency market will bounce back first when we get a big bull run or a big bull market? Will it be the metaverse sector or will it be the DeFi sector? I will go first on this one. The metaverse. The answer is metaverse and it's simple. There is so much money flowing into the metaverse from giant traditional finance companies you got Adidas, Gucci, Meta, freaking everyone and their mom is building in the metaverse. All this money is flowing in there. All these NFTs are doing land sales. You got Cardano land sales. You got Solana land sales. You got Ethereum. You got Board Ape land sales. You got sub. I mean, everything is going to the metaverse. There's a reason why they're projecting it to be a multi-trillion dollar sector of the cryptocurrency market in the next five years. Now, doesn't mean DeFi is not going to move, but what's the first one that's going to come out of this bear market? It is going to be the metaverse. It, it gives nothing in crypto is physical, right? But it gives, it makes you feel like you have something of substance that you can use, you can go to, you can play in, you, whatever the case may be. It, the answer is metaverse. Robin? 
You should be ashamed of yourself. How are you going to get behind Metaverse? You don't even play video games, first of all. It, Metaverse one, isn't video number games. One. That's like that's like you uh, buying a pool and not knowing how to swim. Get out of here, bro. Now, <laughs> so, you know what? The backbone of cryptocurrency is the fact that it makes your life better uh, as far as your options to get out of the traditional finance. So you don't want to use bank account. You don't want to use the traditional loans. You're tired of uh, this crap uh, returns on your savings account. You go to DeFi. That is here now. You know what's not here now? The metaverse. What it is, is it's an ugly ass computer game. That's all it is. Have you looked at any of the metaverse projects? First of all, none of them. Are sexy. They don't. None of them look like Call of Duty. None of them look like uh, this this sexy world that you run around in. Um, Decentraland does look uh, look all right, but no VR headset capability, no console capability. It's just a computer game. Can't kill nobody in it. You got to wear their <laughs> stupid outfits. It, you know what? It's not here. The tech isn't here. It will be here. It will take over the space. Just not when anytime next, soon. When bro. the next bull run comes, not anytime soon, man. I'm talking. You, everybody's talking about this metaverse going to take over the world, man. First of all, the people that are in the metaverse don't even play video games. This is all just VC funding. It's all these big players that that maybe played Mario back in the day. Uh, they don't play video games, but yet they're investing in video Why games. Why do you keep tying video games to metaverse? Because it's a video game. Just video game. <laughs> Right now, you Metaverse play on it on a games. computer. You got to have a high-performance computer. You got to get in. How long do you graph. think until Metaverse is uh, Technology-wise, at I like least. I, that's where I'm at, man. Okay, the VR headsets can't function on their own, first of all. Okay. They're not powerful enough to... to you to said it yourself. There is tons of money flowing into the space it's not going to take 10 years. But it doesn't matter. You can build the nicest what? casino ever, but if people don't show up, it's not going to be successful. People want a metaverse, so you don't have to worry about people not showing up. People will show up. Show you up how? With their computer? These, these, <laughs> these boomers that are investing in it don't have the good computers to get in there. And you think they're going to play it with the mouse and keyboard? And like, I look at another person, they're like, oh, you play video games with a mouse and keyboard? They look hella confused, bro. They're like, how's that work, man? They're like, where do you plug the controller in? I'm like, first of all, you can plug the controller in if you wanted to. But I'm just saying that you would theoretically need a mouse and keyboard and a computer, a high-powered one, right now to run the metaverse. No VR headset cap capabilities. And the graphics are VR doo -doo. headsets are here. You just need them integrated. It's not that hard. I was a software engineer right now. No. The VR headsets are not powerful enough. The graphics for a VR headset They're are coming, like bro. PlayStation 1 They're style, coming. bro. Have They're you coming. played Oculus? Have you went to the sandbox VR at the Venetian? No, yeah, you haven't. Yeah. Talk Let to me, me tell you, you the, the those those uh <laughs> those uh VR traction things that you go to, the VR headset has a freaking wire plugged into it, right? So yeah. That's plugged into a, a super computer, bro. It's plugged into a computer that is very high performance. First of all, if you're going to be using a VR headset and you and rendering like really good graphics, you need a $5,000 PC, bro. And on top of that, you're going to need the, the the headset. And you think any of these these people that are going to spend that kind of money are going to go wander around and play in the metaverse all day? Yeah, it might be a couple of losers, but <laughs> wow, you're a loser. I'm just saying, man. Everybody, I'm telling you, I'll be the first one to poop on this pipe dream, bro. Like, everybody wants this metaverse thing to happen. It makes sense. It's going to be a thing. However, the tech is not here for an immersive metaverse. If you want to sit here and call it a metaverse, cool. That's just a trendy word right now. But right now, people are just building play-to-earn video games on a computer. That's all it is. It's a play-to-earn video game on the computer. It's Minecraft with NFTs. Am I wrong? Yes. It's Minecraft with NFTs. You're 100%. Tell me Sandbox doesn't look like Minecraft with NFTs. Sandbox. Tell me Decentraland ain't, ain't, uh, doesn't look like uh, some... So you're trying to say you hate Minecraft? Wow. No, I'm just saying wow. that people are sitting here talking about, oh, I'm going to go shopping in the metaverse. I'm going to be wandering around. I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna take my boo yeah, thing over to build. Adidas store and yeah. buy some new outfits. And I'm going to live there. I'm going to invite. I'm going to have family reunions. <laughs> I'm going to get married over here. Like, get out of here, bro. Not for another 10 years, man. We found another trigger to Robin. <laughs> the first one telling him he's wrong when no, he gives his opinion. No, the thing is, is I am a I am a video game Second guy, one is and metaverse. I'm looking at these trash ass metaverse video games. That's what they are. They're 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 literally an RPG. It's a role playing game, massive environment, but you can't kill nobody. So now you're saying you're a murderer. Wow. <laughs>
<laughs> what the hell is wrong no, with you, bro? I'm just saying. He just wants to kill people. It's a metaverse. It's the Sims without a VR headset, bro. It's the Sims without if a VR headset. I ain't killing no one. I want the metaverse, bro. I'm a Call of Duty guy, bro, okay? All right, give me give me an assault rifle. Uh, what do you guys think? What's the chat thing? Put a one if you think metaverse. Put a two if you think DeFi will be the first. I am the only, we, I am the only person in crypto. That is against this metaverse thing. And I'm not against the idea. I'm against the idea against that it's going to hum- pop off in the next humanity. year or two. You're, like, against you're humanity. sadly mistaken. You think there's going to be some massive worldwide adoption within the next 24 months. Not going to happen. Sorry. Anyways. Uh, you can still get in early. I'm not saying that Decentraland won't eventually upgrade and... I'm not saying Decentraland won't eventually have capability for VR headset. They'll be the first mover. They already got it built out. It could get there. I'm I'm not saying that these these I'm not saying that these projects are tr- are, are are gonna go to zero. I'm not even saying that. I'm just saying they're not gonna moonshot in the next two months, in the next two years. You know, you know what my life's goal is gonna be from now on? Is to make sure that our very first channel sponsor is a metaverse company. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I'm just going to drive into work. I'm going to drive into the studio with a VR headset on. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that does. Hi, is this David? Yeah, uh, we have Mr. Klein here. He got in a car accident. Uh, taking him to the hospital. It was like, look, man. The light was green in my headset. <laughs> this dude. All right, let's move on to our last segment of our show, The Talking Points. <laughs> So, Robin mentioned this during his uh, little segment at the beginning, but we will mention it again because it's of grave importance. Terra becomes the second largest corporate holder of Bitcoin, surpassing Tesla. Luna Foundation Guard, also known as LFG, a.k.a. Let's Fucking Go, because all they're doing is buying Bitcoin, has become the second largest corporate Bitcoin holder, surpassing e-car maker Tesla. Recent, uh, they recently purchased another $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, via an over-the-counter deal with full-service digital currency prime broker Genesis and crypto trading and venture capital firm Three Arrows Capital. The Let's Fucking Go Fund now holds 80,393 Bitcoin, which total value stands at $2.9 billion. Now, uh, Terra Luna's founder, Do Kwon, expects that the nonprofit's Bitcoin holdings will eventually reach $10 billion. So, Robin? Why didn't we see a uh, big? Did Bitcoin's price only stabilize because of this buy? Or are you surprised it didn't go up higher? What are your thoughts? You know, I <clears throat> so I discussed earlier, they did um, buy some of it through the order books. Um, so the LFG, if you pull up my mine here, pulling up that article I had earlier. Uh, they got one billion worth of BTC over the counter, uh, so they bought this. They basically cleared a bunch of order books, uh, so maybe that was them because I they didn't buy this like this morning. I think they just been buying like the last couple of days. So I mean, looking at the Bitcoin in the last seven days, we did have some run ups. Maybe they bought here thirty seven thousand, and uh, they're the ones that pushed it up to thirty nine, uh, because obviously I don't see a billion dollars worth of volume down here. I'm not, I'm not saying like it's not possible. Over the counter are not through order books. Hmm? Not order over the counter are not through like centralized exchanges. I thought over the counter, over the counter is right. No, no. Over the counter is essentially a backdoor. Oh, okay. you go through a broker dealer. Oh, my bad. <clears throat> oh, good, you get my terminology, right? Um, now, uh, five hundred billion. Also, five hundred billion. So another half a billion was uh was purchased with the helps of uh, Three Arrows Capital yeah. here. But you know, the the one thing I'm surprised at is right now, tons of volume going on with uh, UST. Uh, but what isn't what is going down with Bitcoin is the terror. So, uh, I was expecting. What's a good entry point for you, Terra? I haven't, I haven't got into Terra, so I haven't really looked at the the main support zones. I mean, I don't really know if there's a bad time. I mean, they keep buying up Bitcoin, so I mean, honestly, like a project like this, if you're if you're looking to get in, just 
dollar cost average in, honestly. I mean, I mean, if you want to look at the chart, you know, this eighty dollars is huge support. So, I mean, the last time we were under eighty bucks was back in uh, February. So it's been a while, man. Uh, so I mean, I think now would be. I mean, honestly, I mean. Just looking at recent price price history, I mean, right now is a really good time. Um, I mean, it had its more more uh, recent pump this year. So, I mean, if you go back to 2021, um, a little different. But uh, and then uh, Tox says he thought he was the largest holder. Uh, yes, no, Ter- Terra is now second. Instant. No, this is um, no. largest single wallet holders. Corporate single wallet holders. Yeah, for corporations uh, or enterprise. Um, grayscale, grayscale is uh, an institution, which is uh, which they have their trust. It's not necess- It's not part of their assets uh, or their like their a personal like treasury. Uh, so, yeah. But grayscale technically owns the, the most. most Bitcoin, followed by Sailor, uh, and then uh, now I don't know where where. Terra Luna lands. Terra Luna is number two now. Number two no, in, in, in terms in, of corporate. In corporate. Uh, Overall, they're, top, they're number they're, three. They're top ten. Now, they, uh, in the article, it, it didn't say what number. They just said top ten here. Uh, as in far as article wallets. article or my article? Uh, earlier, I was reading over it, and it was saying they're in the top ten wallets. So they're so they're they're not they hold eighty thousand three hundred ninety three Bitcoin now. So they're number two behind Sailor, taking for not, institutions for insti- for for cor- for corporate, yeah. not including GBTC. If you add in GBTC, they're number th- I believe they're number th- three or four. So either way, they're top five. And uh, I was uh, I I initially thought we we're going to see a nice pump from this uh, buy, but when I started thinking about it. I was like, the Nasdaq was down. Five percent, and Bitcoin was only down what two and a half percent. So maybe this kind of helps stabilize the uh, the price of Bitcoin versus giving us a big pump. So uh, extremely bullish, and you will continue to see this happen. I just would have thought Terra would have been pumping by now. Oh, Terra pumping? Yeah, that's kind of where I was getting at earlier. Um, just in the past, when when Bitcoin has dropped, and then um, after it dropped. It would uh, trade sideways, and then that's when you'd get these uh, big pumps out of Terra. But I've yet to see it. I mean, Anchor Protocol is pumping, but yeah. Alex says Terra's number. Here to stay. Alex says number seven. Number seven. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. <sighs> number two in my heart. Let's move on. Argentina. What you doing? Their central bank steps in to block new crypto offerings from banks. It's a crypto block. Instead of the other block that people don't like. Central Bank of Argentina, the BCRA, has put the kibosh on financial institutions offering crypto trading only days after only uh, days after two of the country's largest banks signaled they were opening up to digital assets. On Thursday, the BCRA said the move was to mitigate the risks crypto poses to users and to quote to the financial system as a whole, citing their volatility, use in money laundering, and absence of regulatory safeguards. Now, uh, the decision to open crypto trading was decided by a poll that was conducted by another bank, which 60% of the people polled said they wanted easier access to digital currencies. 21% of respondents in Argentina had owned or used crypto in 2021, making them the sixth highest rate of adoption in the world and the highest rate in the Americas. In the Americas. Now, if you're wondering, well... Why did the central bank all of a sudden do this? Why? People want it. Why would the central bank step in? Well, I got an answer for you, my friends. To understand why, we first need to understand the landscape of this country. Their inflation rose another 6.7% in March, the highest rate in 20 years to hit 55.1 year over year. And also the change in emphasis from last May could be related to a $44 billion extended debt plan from the IMF, a clause which was for Argentina to discourage the use of cryptocurrencies. International motherfuckers, stop putting your hands in everyone's pot. 
Stop trying to tell people how to run their countries. Stop freaking blackmailing them and saying, if you allow crypto, then we're not going to give you money. We're not going to help your country. It's like your friend is down, his nose is bleeding, his face is cut up. Instead of reaching a hand down, say, here, let me help you. Whoa, but wait first, you got five bucks? Just help them, man. Stop, like, cornering people and countries. You're literally hurting people. And above, this, above that point, uh, it talks about what the people are doing to, to fight inflation. Some Argentinians have turned to crypto in an attempt to hedge against the inflation. Others began processing uh, began the process of mining crypto to, fi to fight inflation. And you're over here saying, well, Central Bank, if uh, you don't shit on cryptocurrencies, we ain't giving you this $44 billion. Like, fuck you. Fuck you. That's all I got. No, the shit pisses me off, man. It pisses me off. Drop like 16 curse words. In a I don't care, bro. man. Like, this shit, <laughs> like, it literally upsets me, bro. People are starving to death. People can't afford the necessities. And you're over here... All because you don't like crypto and you're, you're telling this bank, hey, shun crypto. Don't let people fight inflation. Don't let people take their finances into their own hands. Because if you want this $44 billion to help your country, you, it ain't going to happen if you don't shit on crypto. Like, F you, man. I mean, this is what uh, traditional finance has been doing for years, bro. Fuck the IMF. This ain't, this ain't new. And you know what? It's you know, pisses it's me it's off, not, man. You know what? I mean, the U.S. does it, too. You don't get along Bullshit, with our policies. Dude. You don't sign our trade Bullshit. agreements. We'll uh, sanction you, or we'll. This is how this is how business works, bro. Pay attention to the countries that 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 ban crypto. Pay attention to those countries because those are the worst governments. Those are the worst ones, the the absolute worst, because they know what crypto can do to their control of their people and their government and the finance and their monetary system, and it scares them and it should scare them. But there's no way you can ban crypto because it's coming. You got anything to add to this? Nope. Nope. All right. Tumbleweeds blow through Coinbase NFT on its first day with just 75K in volume. We are the home of tumbleweeds. Womp, womp, womp. You ever see a we tumbleweed? Are. I fucking hate. I am starting to hate the Vegas weather. Wind, tumbleweed, dust, pollen, robin. Like, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said tumbleweeds? <laughs> so, uh, how do you hate tumbleweeds? Like, has a tumbleweed ever, like, took out your leg or something when you're, like, crossing the road? No, like, what no, happened? No, no. In case y'all didn't know, desert plants have the worst pollen. You know why? I'll tell you, I'll give you a little, uh, give you a little, uh, little backstory on, on why the pollen in, in the desert is the worst. You would think, you know, you have a lot of uh, greenery in other parts of the world. You're like, oh, man, you got trees and plants and flowers. You'd be like, man, um, pollen there has got to be bad. Pollen is absolutely horrific here in the desert here in las vegas and why is that because think about it you got a plant here you got a cactus here how close is the next cactus what the fuck? what are you talking it's, about it's bro? it's, it's you... hundreds of meters away and how does <laughs> the cactus wrong? how does a cactus what is how does it pollinate how does it pollinate the other cactus what is wrong with you with, with the not, blockchain. Not, not with the blockchain so it has an immense amount of distance oh God, it needs man. to cover to, to pollinate the next cactus over. Were you dropped so, on your head as so, a baby? So what ends up happening Sorry. is Better it has question. to shoot out tons of pollen How many for it to, times? To, to pollinate the next cactus How over. How many and times so were you dropped on your head? That's why there's so much more pollen because these cactuses are trying to pollinate their friends far away. And, you know, little <laughs> the, the apple tree. I cannot wait till Tuesday. Bro. The apple tree <laughs> doesn't need to Tuesday. pollinate very far because apples are right next to each other. Daniel yeah. said, uh, Dave is that dude you don't want to cut off on flamingo you guys are not too f familiar with vegas flamingo is a very popular street out here and tupac traffic, got shot on yeah. flamingo yeah traffic flamingo and cobalt horrible. tupac got shot also i don't take flamingo i take tropic animals anyways uh coin bay back to the article thanks for that uh what what's the man, term i'm just saying you come visit vegas bro bring your claritin man that's all i'm saying Why no you there's do story time you should have done story no time. the uh the, the sector where it focuses on plants there's a word for it. You can find it. Uh, so back to the article. <laughs> Coinbase uh, opened its be uh, beta NFT marketplace to the public on Wednesday with on-chain data showing a maximum of 150 transactions total uh, and 75K volume. Uh, just put that into perspective. Um, OpenSea recorded $1.18 on the same day. So uh, Coinbase, you flop. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, now the number pales in it 
pales into insignificance compared to expectations arising uh, from the wait list. More than 8.4 million email addresses signed up for the wait list before it moved into beta on April 20th. Analytics show that just over 1,200 people have transacted on the platform. Less than a tenth of 1%. 0.014% of the wait list. That's horrible, man. Uh, if you're a Coinbase... Are you scrapping the NFT marketplace? Are you are you in the dumps, Robin? You're you're Brian Armstrong. How are you feeling today? Uh aren't they still in like that uh private? Isn't this No, it's it's, it's full fully ready, rolled out? Bro. Yeah. Still new, man. Yeah, I don't get there, man. Seventy five K in volume when OpenSea did look, one point man. Billion. OpenC is dropping the ball. They had a new You another... couldn't even get to hundred K, bro. Okay. Did you hear about OpenSea's uh news today? What? Their uh their their Twitter handle or their Twitter account got hacked. Of course, again, taken over. And uh, Elon, we need you. They ended up uh, promoting some YouTube scam, and people lost NFTs again. And so this body record, uh, tons every. I'm telling you, not 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 two or three days go by without hearing some kind of exploit that uh, went through uh, OpenSea, and. You know what? There's no fees on uh, Coinbase right now. So you you watch. Drop the ball there, Open C. You know who's going to pick up the ball? Coinbase. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. They can't even pick up their own ball. You leave Let Coinbase. alone Open C's ball. Coinbase is the number one American exchange. It's the yeah, friendly, there ain't uh, no NFT platform, bro. Stay in your lane. The numbers bro. show it. How are you going to have you, 3 million people register for your uh, for your wait list and then like just like 1,200 people <laughs> actually sign up? It's did like, you guys get the email like to sign yeah, up? Yeah. I, and sign I up. just Yeah, I just found it like very... Um, why didn't you just link it or... Offer you something on the app? Yeah. You can click like, I don't get why they made it so complicated. Well, for direct I'm, deposits, they did that. You could just click something on the app. You know, get more your money. Yeah, but like when the coin... I was like, oh, I'll sign up and then ask for like 10 steps. I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Hey, yeah, it's still it's still early, bro. I'm That's why you. we need digital IDs on the blockchain. You can literally have all your information on there and just give the QR code or give the little. Uh, That's up for discussion. Do you want your digital identification on the blockchain? It's already on. Everything's already on there. As long as it's uh, as long as it's uh, mm -hmm. you boy private, bro. I ain't got nothing nowhere. Okay, you have a social security number? Nope. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got an eight digit social security number. How you doing? I'm hiding the last number. <laughs> I was like, wait, how many are there? Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, so we talked about Fidelity. Then uh, doing 401ks in Bitcoin. Then we talked about Elizabeth Warren with her antics again. And now we're talking it again. This is bullish news. Senator's Financial Freedom Act would ensure Bitcoin can be in your 401ks. Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville from Alabama has unveiled a new bill he calls the Financial Freedom Act to allow Americans to add cryptocurrency to their 401ks retirement plans uh, unencumbered by regulatory guidance. The new bill in Tuberville's response to the Department of Labor's push to potentially keep crypto out of 401ks due to its perceived potential to ri for risk. The uh, Department of Labor said employees who chose to invest in crypto through the 401ks could attract legal attention. Um, Senator Tuberville said the federal government has no business interfering with the ability of American workers to invest their 401k plans as they see fit. Thank you. Thank you. You draft us into a war. You'd send us overseas to fight your battles. We're okay to pick up a gun and murder someone else for your uh, benefit of whatever you want to happen. Huh? But you ain't okay with us picking where we want our money in our retirement plans. You said it's okay to pick up a gun and murder somebody? No, I'm saying for the government. It's okay to send us uh, send 18-year-olds overseas. All Man, right. They ain't murdering. Now go out there and be somebody. Here's a rifle. Here's a handgun. Here's uh, three friends. Go play Call of Duty in real life. But uh, we can't pick where we want our money to go in our 401ks. You got a twisted view of how the government, uh, how the military works. Okay, well, please, no. No tangent, please. Just, I'm just saying no, you're okay, you're, but no tangent. Yeah, I get it. They send Please. people to war, but I mean, okay. you're talking about giving murdering and all this stuff, man. You know, I come from military town, war Norfolk, Virginia. Murder. Let me tell you, man, I got deep I, roots no, I in the military, this. Please, and please. I'm just saying. There's seven minutes, that we have three more. I'm articles. just saying that you know, I have nothing but respect for military. What you guys do here, David, apparently doesn't uh, doesn't like your uh, your motive. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. 
Thank you. Um, and then uh, Senator Tuberville also went on to say whether you, whether or not you believe in the long-term economic prospects of cryptocurrency, the choice of what you invest your retirement savings in should be yours, not that of the government. Thank you, Senator. Uh, also, isn't he the uh, former football coach? Tommy Tuberville. Is he? I think so. Rocco. Give us a little fact check, my friend. Uh, all right, Robin, you got anything to add to this? It needs to happen, guys. Do you Stop telling to... us how to spend our money. Now you ask me if I got something to add, and then you just come. Well, because, you know, I got... You got anything to add? You Stop spending our money. enough, bro, <laughs> please. All right, you got anything to add? Nah. That's it? <laughs> I'm a little parched this morning, what, my friend. What, what side of the cup you like? You like this? Um, you like the coin logo? Uh huh. Or do you like the uh, this logo? Ooh. That's a good question. I don't know. We're redesigning our um, our Rocco's redesigning our our layout here, so we're gonna have some different transitions and scenes. See? Oh, uh, real quick, I do want to say we gotta have Crypto Stash on the show Monday. So the next yeah. show that we have coming Monday, coming back from our break. Uh, we will have Crypto Stash. If you're not familiar who he is, big, big YouTube personality. And he is a uh, utmost expert when it comes to NFTs and the metaverse. Uh, so before yeah, we sign uh, off, if I'm, you got something you want us, any kind of project you want to cover, if there's any kind of basic NFT questions, uh, drop them in the chat. So that way we can write them down. Uh, we'll, we'll do a poll before or we'll do a, a a question I want, proposal. But. I wonder if uh, Robin goes on his metaverse rant. What uh, what Stash's reply is going to be? And I will facilitate that. I will poke the bear. You better believe it. Yeah. You leave me. Th- it's my bear face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I, yeah. What I'm is that? A bear that just woke up dude, from hibernation? I'm telling you, bro. Your boy can straight catch a salmon with his teeth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you see. What, what is, is this? Player one? Surrogate. Oh, surrogates. No. Is that Bruce Willis? Yeah, Bruce Willis. Hey, did he die? No, Bruce Willis didn't die. Get out of here with your bad juju, bro. No, I thought. If something bad happens to Bruce Willis, man, I'm putting it on you, Stop bro. Stop the show. Why are you allowed to set something other than gang? He said Elrond. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just uses four letter words. Why are you allowed? We love you, my dude. Hey, <laughs> hey, Maybe uh, and now it makes sense. He doesn't speak a lot, and he says, "Why are you loud?" That's his name. He's like, "Keep it quiet," because I ain't trying to speak. Mm. Makes sense. I'm, maybe maybe, sense. maybe he just has issues like using like a full keyboard. No, maybe he has issues. He's like with typing you, with his nose. He, he knows you speak more than enough for everyone in this community. Mm. Uh, okay, so what was the other thing you pulled up? Did you pull up the uh, Tommy Tuberville? Okay, all right. Let's move on to um, our next article here. We talked about this earlier during Forest, uh, and then we'll just kind of highlight it real quick. Staked Ethereum reaches 10% of circulating supply. There is now more than 12 million, 12 million ETH staked on the Beacon chain, according to Ethereum Launchpad dashboard. Uh, additionally, CoinMarketCap is currently reporting a circulating supply of a little over 120 million ETH, which means that 10% has been staked, taking it out of circulation. Uh, and the 12,341,535 Ethereum is currently worth $34 billion. Staking rewards are around 4.4% if you're staking ETH. There are concerns that the merge will result in an exodus from staking as Ethereum gets freed up from withdrawals. Uh, but withdrawals won't be enabled until at least six months after the merge. And then I believe the maximum is around 30K a day. Smart. Uh, so you don't... Um, so you don't just uh, dump on the market, Robin. I'm laughing because why you're allowed to say, ha another four letter word. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, How dope would it be to have a community member? I'm like, telling yeah. you, man, I, I think, I think this E thing is gonna, it's gonna just disappoint everybody because everybody's super bullish and it doesn't really do much different. It's a little faster. Or the block size increases by, no, 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 the time to finality. So the speed between each block decreases. So well, it goes, from, it goes from like 13 seconds on one, average to like 12. Once they introduce sharding. Yeah, but that's that, not the next, that's not until yeah, the yeah. next upgrade. So I, I don't know. It just has all the makings 
of what happened with Cardano. Remember when Cardano hit like three dollars and like thirty cents or something three stupid days like before that? the smart contract? Yeah, actually and everyone's like, "Yo, smart contract is gonna, you know, this thing's gonna transform into like." <laughs> And then <laughs> transformer music, bro. You know what's that? You know what I'm saying? What is it? Do we hear for his bear? Oh my god, my bear, bro. <laughs> no, how about my? Uh, goes the bear. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? A bear waking up from a three year hibernation? Like, what is wrong with you? Have you seen and my? The, the have you seen my Velociraptor though? That's a good one. My Velociraptor, like. <laughs> he said velociraptor it's a velociraptor bro v velocity uh bro. no f o well stop s s stop <laughs> but i went spelling b three years fossil? in a row fossil uh, raptor fossil uh raptor bro get oh, out of here bro. man oh that was funny all right uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell with E2.0. Uh, when will we even see it? Who knows? Uh, one more article. <laughs> last article. That's, even, that's a better question. That's I was going to skip by this article and be done. But for the sake of poking the uh, sleeping bear over here, Spotify builds its own land in the metaverse with Roblox. <laughs> uh, Spotify is making a foray into the metaverse, becoming the first music streaming platform to enter the virtual realm. According to whom you ask, this futuristic blockchain-based Area is either the next great big thing in marketing and nearly everything else or an overblown cliche. The new virtual world provides users with one-of-a-kind music-themed island where they may dance, experiment with audio, and share their stories with everyone else. Uh, the move was enabled by Roblox, and Spotify believes the exclusive in-game virtual merchandise will provide an opportunity for artists to engage with their fans and earn money. Robin, take the floor. Well, what about... What? Everybody's getting in the metaverse, man. Ain't nothing new here. Spotify. I mean, it makes sense, though. Gonna have music bump, bumping in the metaverse. Daniel said, uh, he said uh, there's a dude that hops like that at Texas Station. Texas Station is closed, my dude. <laughs> Texas oh, Station is so ghetto. Yep, he was a football coach. Go you know, uh, or, uh, I believe Auburn, right? No, Texas Tech. If you come to Las Vegas, do not... Stay at any stations, casinos. Do not stay at Texas Station. When I first moved out here, your boy was on a budget. I got a room at Texas Station. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I opened the door, right? I opened the door to the hotel room. And and so, you know, you got the normal walls, you know, the white wall like you'd have in a hotel. But the wall where the headboard would be, the wall where the bed meets the wall, the headboard bed is gone. Was just straight red bricks, bro. <laughs> it was like wow. not even painted. It was like you had drywall, 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 and then one wall just straight red bricks. And I'm just like, wow. Oh, man. I think it was like twenty bucks a night for that room, though. Yeah, not bad. Wow. And we got someone. Uh, well, I was got, back in the day. I think we got someone new in the chat. Who we got? You're a chicken. <laughs> El Pollo. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Welcome, to Sin City Crypto. And if you're crazy, we can call you El Pollo Loco. Yeah, you El caught Pollo us Loco. at the end of the show. We're literally not talking crypto right now. Uh, if you watch us Monday through Friday, uh, we do cover crypto mainly until I start going on my tangents. So. Yeah. But come back Monday. We're going to have crypto uh, stash on. Crypto mustache. Crypto mustache. He's coming on with his mustache. Yeah. Uh, all right. Did, did anybody put any uh, suggestions for... Uh, not yet. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's put up a Twitter a Twitter uh, poll a tweet, tweeters and ask uh, what questions would you like us to ask Crypto Stash? Okay, because I don't really have anything. Honestly, I'm not a big NFT. No, don't guy. worry. You you, uh, you leave it to me, my friend. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, I got you. And then uh, well, you can throw me to the wolves because I'm sure he'll he'll I'll shut, throw you he'll, to the Velociraptors. I will like try to poop on the metaverse, and he'll be like, "That's his thing." He'll be like, "What are you talking Bro, about? Are you?" He's like, uh, <laughs> "Hey, I just uh, signed me off the show right now. Why the hell did I come on the show?" <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, roll the outro music. We are Finito. Friends and family of our community, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. Forrest, thank you so much again. Also, guys, go support Forrest. Go support Crypto Stackers Pro. The least you can do, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Follow him on Twitter. Did Kenny G get his, uh, his big Kenny G got his money. Congratulations. We're still waiting for Kerry. I have not received an email back. 
But make sure you email us back. We want to send you some big ones. Anyways, on behalf of myself, Robin, Rocco, and Eddie, have a great weekend. We will see you Monday. Peace. Margaritas and your readers are goof off. I got 16 missed calls on my phone. Tom's change, Nikki D's turn into Rabucha. Kick my feet up, drink weed, or smoke on a new strong. Couple margaritas and your readers are goof off. Smoking on a island, say she wanna ride with me. Took her on a flight, said all her bags from Italy. I sent her with a friend, they shot for their religiously. Whoa, whoa. Say she love me, but that's when she rockin' Prada back. Then she ready for the next, I will not so fast. Slow down, slow down, slow down, girl, don't you cry. Yeah. Ooh. It's running right, boy.